This LibreTime tutorial is focused towards system administrators who have installed LibreTime and want an introduction to the admin-only settings. We will focus on how to customize the streams that LibreTime provides and how to secure your IceCast instance. You will need to have admin permissions to a LibreTime instance to follow along. So quick admin Okay, first log in with your admin logins, then click on settings. Then we're going to click on general. In this page, you can customize various settings and add your station name and a logo. That will show up on your radio page in the top left of your install. Mini testing. See other tutorials for descriptions and information on the auto-loading playlist and podcast settings. In addition, the tune-in settings have not been tested and require getting special access from tune-in from your station to test. Many of these settings can be left alone. Under Dangerous Options, you have the ability to wipe out your entire track library with a few clicks. It's a good reason to reserve admin access for people who really need it. So I'd suggest that if your station is put together collaboratively, you create logins for each user. To this, we'll click on Users. We'll create an example program manager to give your imaginary friend, Larry, the ability to help you get your station set up. So you click on New User and type in username, type in Larry. And we'll put in cool Larry as the password. Make sure you type it twice. Then Larry imaginary. Whatever information you want to add. The only other required field is email. And then under user, so we'll type in Larry at libretime.org. Then under user type, we will select program manager. It'll give you a brief overview of what they can do. And we'll click save. LibreTime doesn't send automatic notifications about new accounts created, so you'll need to relay this information to any users you create accounts for. If you select DJ as user type, the user will only be able to upload their own tracks and can only schedule shows they are given permission to. See our tutorial on creating shows for more information. Guest is basically a read-only view that can access the track library and can view past and upcoming scheduled content in the calendar. Another important section is the status page. If you click on status and if everything is green, that means everything is working. Now we will explore the stream section, which is the most complex part of admin and briefly talk about how to secure your IceCat setup, which isn't done by default if you installed from the install script. So click on streams. Under global, you can enable hardware output if you're using LibreTime to feed an FM transmitter or otherwise want to create an analog audio output. If you're doing this, there are additional steps that might be necessary to pin on your OS. You will probably want to enable auto switch on and auto switch off if you plan on having, so you don't require your DJs to take the additional step of going up here to toggle their shows on after they connect to the stream. Auto switch off will mean that your show will resume to play back a pre-scheduled shows after a DJ disconnects. Otherwise, you shouldn't need to change any of the different settings unless your LibreTime instance is behind a firewall and you want to enable port forwarding. Setting up a login, master source, username, and password will provide anyone with this login the ability to broadcast over any existing show or even other live DJs who are using their show credentials. It should be used sparingly.
Now the important part. Up here, default streaming is what's selected by default. And it relies upon a hard-coded and secure password of HackMe. And so it should be changed before your station goes live. In order to do this, we're going to have to click on custom slash third party streaming and then click OK. Now you can change the information in here to increase your bitrate, change from MP3 to Opus to AAC, although there's different drawbacks and benefits to each of those. AAC may require additional modifications, so I would recommend sticking with AUG Vorbis or MP3 by default. And then under additional options, higher bitrate will have better sound quality, but it will also require more bandwidth. And Libre 10 by default supports up to three streams. You can play with different settings here, but by default Icecast is installed on port 8000. And if you plan on using the Icecast server setup hosted by Libertime, then keep in mind the bandwidth will be required to host listeners. If you are, for instance, hosting this off a home or office internet connection, rather than a co-located or virtual private server, if your station got popular enough, it could negatively affect the internet connection for any other purposes. For a small hobby station with only a few listeners, this could be fine. But in general, you might want to consider paying for a third-party host or setting up your LibreTime instance in a data center or location with a high amount of bandwidth. For the purpose of this tutorial, we're going to assume that your LibreTime instance is using the built-in LibreTime Icecast. The only thing you need to change otherwise would be the host name to a third-party server. So the next step is important if you didn't set up a new Icecast 2 password during the install process. I'm going to click additional options. If you change the Icecast 2 password, you can skip forward and enter the new credentials below. Otherwise, I'm going to walk you through how to edit it from the command line. This is important because without it, your LibreTime stream is insecure and anyone could in effect, use your Icecast stream and control the admin screen for Icecast. So we need to change the Icecast to config file. This requires actually modifying the underlying system config files. If you're hosting your own LibreTime instance, so we're going to SSH into our server. This assumes you have root or pseudo credentials on the server you installed LibreTime on. So you need to go to a terminal. Or if you're using Windows, putty.exe can work. And then connect. I'm already connected, but I'll reconnect. I'll be connecting through via SSH through Vagrant for the purposes of this tutorial. Often, once we have connected, we're going to first back up and then edit your Icecast config file. So we're going to type in sudo copy cp space etc slash icecast2 slash icecast2 dot xml. Then we're going to do icecast dot bak. And you can use tab to autocomplete once you've started typing this. In most instances, it will automatically complete the file. So you might have needed to type in a password there. If it says permission denied, you might need to have an issue. If otherwise you have sudo access, then we can proceed with editing. So we'll type in sudo nano slash and this will open up the screen. And you should be able to use your arrow keys to scroll down. As you can see here, we have an insecure 
source password, relay password, and admin, and admin password. So you can go over here using the arrow keys and manually change this to like my new password. Be careful when you're editing this file, is deleting the long line or adding an extra unneeded character could cause your stream to not work. We just want to change where it says hack me to a secure password. You generally won't need to type this in again after you save the password in your stream settings page. If you are using nano and you want to try a shortcut here, you could type the control button and then type, click W and then keep on holding control and then type pop up with the search and replace. Okay. Huh. And that will bring you to the next ones that you need to change. Replace all of them. For some reason, it's not.